Section 3.3, Derivatives of Trigonometric Functions. So before we go into that, I want to cover a few little review items that we might need to have. So review of the notation that we might see. Sine squared x equals sine of x squared. Sine x squared equals sine of x squared. Sine of x to the negative 1, the inverse, is 1 over sine of x, which equals cosecant of x. Sine x to the negative 1 equals sine times 1, of the, 1 over x. Sine to the negative 1 x equals arc sine x, the inverse sine of x. So trigonometric functions. Cosine of x, cosine of theta equals x, sine of theta equals y. Therefore, tangent equals sine divided by cosine. Secant equals 1 over cosine. Cosecant equals 1 over sine. Cotangent equals cosine over sine. Pythagorean um, identity, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. And reciprocal identities, secant equals 1 over cosine, tangent equals sine over cosine, cosecant equals 1 over sine, and cotangent equals 1 over tangent. So now, if an angle theta corresponds to a point Q, X, and Y on the unit circle, it is not hard to see that the angle theta plus 2 pi corresponds to the same point Q, X, Y. Therefore, cosine pi of 2 pi equals cosine, cosine theta plus 2 pi equals cosine theta, sine theta plus 2 pi, which equals sine theta. So 2 pi is the smallest positive angle, so we know that cosine of theta plus 2x pi equals cosine theta. Sine of theta plus 2x pi equals sine theta. For any x that is 0, positive or negative 1, positive or negative 2, and so on and so forth. So example, find the period function for f of x equals negative 3 cosine 3x. The function f of x equals negative 3 cosine 3 of x runs through a full circle when the angle 3x runs from 0 to 2 pi, or equivalently when x goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3. So the period of f of x is then 2 pi over 3. Trigonometric functions are important to various areas of study. For example, electric circuits, heat flow, sound waves, each of these involves periodic behavior. So here's a sketch of one standard period of the function y equals sine x. So this is a period. So remember when we talk about the function f defined for all real numbers x by f of x equals sine x, we know that sine x means the sine of the angle whose radian measure is x. So same is true for the rest, which means cosine and tangent. So the graph of sine of the x is shown right here. We can take the derivative of that which means these parts where it's zero is where it's going to correspond to a cross. Since this goes down, this is negative, so this is below. This again corresponds to a zero, and this is graphed just as the other graphs that we've covered in previous sections on graphing the derivative. So it will look the same as the cosine curve. So next, using the fact that f prime of x represents the slope of the tangent line to the curve, sketch the graph of y prime. And there it is. From the above graphic, it appears that the derivative of y equals sine x is cosine x. Using the definition of the derivative along with the following limits, limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta equals 1, very important, and same here, limit if theta approaches 0, cosine theta minus 1 divided by theta equals 0. It can be verified that the derivative of sine x equals cosine of x. So here's an example. There's the problem. y equals x squared sine x. So first, we take the first function derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And what do we get when we take x squared times derivative of sine x? We're going to get x squared cosine x plus sine of x and then 2x. So we get 2x sine of x. Sketch the graph of y equals cosine x. There it is. Now sketch the graph of y prime. So the slope here is 0, so it should be right here. This goes down, so this is going to go under, and it's going to kind of look like that. Notice that y equals the negative sine x. So derivatives of trig functions. Derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of tangent is secant squared x. 
So cosecant equals negative cosecant x cotangent x. Derivative of secant x equals secant x tangent x. And derivative of cotangent x equals negative cosecant squared x. You will need to know these. And you saw a minute ago how I derived them. Well, the first two. No, it is understood that these functions are based on angles whose radian measure is x. Example two. Find the derivative of f of x equals the secant x divided by 1 plus tangent of x. Here we're going to have to use the quotient formula. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Alright, so we know the derivative of secant squared is secant, tangent, secant x tangent x. The derivative of 1 plus tangent x. We know what would happen to this 1. And we know tangent of x equals secant, x, secant squared x, and we have this on the bottom. And so on and so forth, we would simplify our function. There's two tangents here, a tangent here, and a secant here. Therefore, we're going to be left with tangent minus 1. An object at the end of a vertical spring is stretched 4 centimeters beyond its rest position and released at time equals 0. Its position at time t is s equals f of t equals 4 cosine t. Find the velocity and acceleration at time t and use them to analyze the motion of the object. So here we go. We are going to find the derivative of 4 cosine t. So I'm going to pull the 4 out front, and then I'm going to have 4 times the derivative of t, which means I'm going to have negative 4 sine t. And so I need to do take another derivative to get the acceleration, and so I'm going to pull the negative 4 out front, have sine t inside, and the derivative of sine is cosine, so I'm going to get negative 4 cosine t. And there's a picture of our function, velocity, and acceleration at time. Find the 27th derivative of cosine x. So here's how this works. The first few derivatives of f of x equals cosine x are as follows. First derivative, negative sine x. Second, negative cosine x. The third, sine x. The fourth, cosine x, and then waha at 5, we're back at negative sine x. Therefore, we see that the successive derivatives occur in a cycle of lengths 4, and in particular, 4 to the n of x equals cosine x, wherever n is a multiplier of 4. Therefore, f to the 24x equals cosine x. So if we want to get to 27, which is 25, 26, 27, 3 above this, we could go here and go 1, 2, 3, and we get back to sine of x. So, find the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 7x divided by 4x. In order to apply equation 2, we first rewrite the function by multiplying and dividing by 7. Then we're going to use theta equals 7x, then theta approaches 0 as x approaches 0. So the equation we have is thus as follows. We can pull the 7 divided by 4 out front. We have the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 7x divided by 7x. When we get this like this, we can do sine theta divided by theta, which we know as a theta approaches 0, sine theta divided by theta is 1. So we have a very easy solution to our problem. 7 fourths times 1 equals 7 fourths. Calculate the limit as x approaches 0, x cotangent x. So here we know that the cotangent of x, x cotangent of x equals x cosine x divided by sine of x. And we follow the directions as follows. And we know the continuity of cosine in equation 2, so we can get from this to equals 1. For practice, complete 3.3 .3 practice, but for homework, 3.3 .3 is due. That's it.